Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And today Apple has seeded iOS 10.1 beta 5 to register developers, which comes just a few days following its predecessor being beta 4, which was seeded only on Monday of this week. So we're moving up in iOS 10.1 beta releases like crazy. Now be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. I'm thinking about doing another iPhone 7 giveaway. Also click that subscribe button below next to my channel name. That way you will ensure that you don't miss out anytime I release new videos discussing anything in the realm of jailbreaking. Now we're also going to be talking about the rumored October 27th Mac event, which is what Recode called it. That's the source that broke this story originally. Apple is supposedly going to unveil new Macs on the 27th. We'll talk about that after we discuss iOS 10.1 beta 5. So let's open up Safari here and switch on over to Apple's developer portal, which again is exclusive to registered developers. And scrolling down here under the featured downloads, you'll notice we now have iOS 10.1 beta 5. And right beneath the latest build number here, which is very similar to what we saw for beta 4, you can see it was posted today's date, October 19th, 2016. All right, so what does beta 5 actually feature over its predecessor? Remember, iOS 10.1 is going to be issued primarily to include support for the new dual camera feature on the iPhone 7 Plus models that essentially is able to take two pictures simultaneously with each of the two lenses, combine them, create a nine layer depth map, and kind of blur out images at varying levels levels of blur according to said depth map. Now that new feature is called portrait camera and really beyond that and a few minor changes to the messages app and some bug fixes here and there, iOS 10.1 hasn't really brought any new features to the table, which is pretty astonishing. And as for this fifth beta, we still don't know what it actually features over its predecessor being beta 4. There are no noticeable changes. Switching back over to Safari here, going to the release notes for iOS 10.1 one beta five. There isn't really anything that's explicitly stated here, guys, which is so weird. We haven't really seen any changes since the second beta of iOS 10.1. So what does beta five actually have over beta four? Because I mean, it has to have something, especially considering it was released just a few days after the last beta. Well, this is where things get interesting. Now, in addition to releasing iOS 10.1 beta five on Monday, Apple also released iOS 10.0.3 to the general public. So iOS 10.0.3 brought a remedy for iPhone 7 and 7 Plus owners that were experiencing LTE data connectivity issues, specifically those with Verizon as their carrier of choice. Now at the time when beta 4 was released, we were under the impression that that seed was the one that also included the fixes found in iOS 10.0.3 for cellular data connectivity issues. Now certain sites and publications are making it seem as though beta 5 is the one that includes includes these fixes. However, beta 5 is also for all devices and get this, beta 5 is such a huge file size. When we go ahead and switch on over here to the settings application, general software update on this iPhone 7 plus, you'll notice that iOS 10.1 developer beta 5 is 1.95 gigabytes, guys. That's absolutely insane. This has to be more than a simple cellular connectivity fix and it would make sense that that fix already came with beta 4. If it didn't though, it's definitely here now with beta 5 but this could very well be the final beta version of iOS 10.1, and it makes sense with the event scheduled next week. See so guys, what I'm about to tell you right now is all going to kind of fit together, and the pieces to the puzzle are starting to come into view now. Okay, so on the 27th, Apple is rumored to hold a new event where they will, at the very least, announce brand new MacBook models. It's been forever since they've refreshed the design of the MacBook Pro. The last time really was in 2012 when they announced the first 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. Beyond that, it's really maintained the exact same design. The only thing that's changed are internals and the addition of the 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro. Now, it's thought that we will receive not only a complete and brand new redesign, but a row at the top that's a dedicated OLED display that essentially is dynamic, meaning that you can customize which buttons appear where, and certain developers will be able to take use of that new bar to actually allow for dynamic quick action buttons within it, which is really, really cool. 
Other potential candidates are a brand new refreshed MacBook Air, iMac, Mac Pro, and Mac Mini. Basically, all the Macs are thought to be fair game here at this Mac event, especially considering the vagueness in the Recode report, just insinuating that we will receive new Macs. Though the latter of the two being the Mac Pro and the Mac Mini are the less likely of all candidates to actually receive a refresh at this event. Furthermore, Apple AirPod headphones are supposed to be released at the end of October and the 27th next Thursday is pretty darn close to that. So we could receive more information about the AirPods release at the event or they could be released themselves. So we'll just have to wait and see as far as that's concerned, but that event could also be a very good and very potential release time frame for iOS 10.1 to have been released at least by the 27th, if not on the 27th, guys. See, the fact that Apple's AirPods are going to be released soon at the end of this month, that the event is actually going to be held toward the end of the month on the 27th, and that iOS 10.1 should be released as soon as possible to accommodate the iPhone 7 Plus exclusive dual camera feature, portrait camera, that Apple wants to get out as quickly as possible. It seems very likely that all of this will kind of happen at the same time, or at least within the same time frame. Remember how I've talked about before that Apple likely needs to issue a new firmware to actually include full support for the AirPod headphones? What we see with today's release, especially considering its absolutely massive file size, could be the final version of iOS 10.1, again, before it is released to the masses. Apple's kind of fine tuning things and there is a lot going on behind the scenes. Presumably developer beta 5 features that additional Apple AirPods component that I have talked about previously. So guys, all of this is starting to make sense and what about jailbreaking? See, that is definitely the last piece to the puzzle because as I've said a number of times in my videos, the jailbreak developers are likely waiting for iOS 10.1 to drop before releasing a new utility, considering how major of a feature it actually adds for the iPhone 7 Plus and the fact that they don't want their work to go to waste. They want as many people to be able to jailbreak as possible. And if a brand new firmware is in beta stages while they release a new jailbreak, that gives Apple ample time to actually patch it before that firmware goes live to the public. So iOS 10.1 is looking like a very, very likely candidate for the first iOS 10 jailbreak, guys. I'm not really going to go too into depth on jailbreaking in today's video just because I have a number of times in my latest jailbreak update videos. Again, I will have my playlist linked down below in the description for your convenience. Definitely check out those videos listed there. But essentially, we're looking at iOS 10.1 for a possible release right now. And in the past, after firmwares were released that jailbreak developers inevitably targeted, it took them approximately one to two weeks to ready their tool and release it to the public. So we could receive a jailbreak as early as the beginning of November at this point, seeing as iOS 10.1 will likely be released on or around the 27th of October, guys. So at any rate, an iOS 10 jailbreak is incredibly close. Really, the only thing that could push it back is if another major firmware goes into developer beta testing immediately following iOS 10.1's release, though that is highly unlikely at this point. But because the situation is heavily contingent upon what Apple does, I will keep you fully notified if anything like that does happen. So again, be sure to click the subscribe button below next to my channel name. That way you guys will not miss out when I release new videos. And if you wanna be update even more frequently, just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Join the iCrack Your Advice community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.